All right, now we're going to change gears, but the principles are identical to the water. Food and water, basic necessities of life. So we want to offer food. This is a free choice feeder, trophy feeders, in fact. This is a free choice bulk protein feeder. So it's free food for the wildlife, just like we just saw free water. But if we give it to them in such a dangerous way or such a restrictive way, they won't use it, or if they do, they'll get killed. So what good is the free handout if you're killing them? So we have to make the free food just as safe and as effective and beneficial as the free water. So the tenants, the ideas, the principles are identical. Now the, the feed pen you see here, the exclosure, whatever you want to call it, that's to exclude cattle, feral hogs for the most part and javelina for the most part, horses, and some of your exotic animals. Now John doesn't have any exotics here, but, but some people do have exotics, you know, uh, uh, donkeys and oryx and gimsbach and those big antelope type species. So by putting up this feed pen, you're pretty much just feeding deer. Well, that's what we're here for, is to feed deer. I don't want to feed everybody that wants to show up. I want to feed white-tailed deer. John wants to feed white-tailed deer. So you put up a low fence that cattle, hogs, javelinas, exotics can't get over and feed only those that can jump. And a white-tailed deer can jump very, very well. Second thing he did right is he made these pens huge. Most white-tailed deer travel in packs, in groups, three, four, five, six, seven. This time of the year, the bucks may be in a group of nine or 10. You know, so you've got big bodies, big animals in a big group. So if you built a little bitty small pen, let's just imagine this being right here, and you put a feeder in the middle, only one or two deer are gonna jump in it because there's no room to get around because they still have their personal space just like we do. Look right here, everybody is naturally spread out over 50 feet. How come y'all didn't get shoulder to shoulder and hold each other? Personal space. Everybody has got elbow room. Everybody is this far apart. We didn't tell you to do that. We didn't ask you to do that. You just did it. Personal space. Deer, wildlife, turkey, they have personal space. So they don't want to be shoulder to shoulder any more than y'all do. So keep that in mind. Personal space is very valuable. You're gonna defend your personal space right now. Deer are gonna do the same thing. So you make a big feed pen so that a deer can jump from that side. A deer can jump from that side and still be personal space, still be comfortable. Remember the stress? A deer gets in here and now he knows there's no cattle in here, there's no exotic, there's no hogs. I see the hogs out there walking around, but I don't have to mess with them because I'm in here. See what I mean? Personal space, and this is like a little quiet zone, a little protected zone of all the other riffraff on the ranch. So a deer can get in here and he may lay down. He may spend half of his day in this feed pen, not just because of the feeder, but this is like time out. If you're a little kid, you can go to the corner and nobody will mess with you. You're just here laying down. So a big pen, a pen to begin with, a gate, and that's for human access because that's a long ways to carry feed from the corner from here. So you always want to have at least one gate. That's a no-brainer. A lot of people put two gates so you can drive in, service it, and drive right out. That's a personal preference. Minimum area. Minimum area, Don, I would say is a minimum of 60 by 60 feet. Square versus round. Square, you have the corners. And we've all seen and heard deer fighting, boxers fighting. You get in a corner and you're beat. There's no way out. You have no options. If I put you in the corner, the only way you have out is through me. If I'm bigger, meaner, tougher, and you're injured, game's over. Around pins, there are no corners. You come at me, I can go left, I can go right. I've got options now. And I may be hurt, I may be young, you may be quicker, but I have options. And if I have options, the chances of you getting on me are less. But so you round's better? Here. Round is better. 60 foot minimum diameter? M minimum diameter. Now I say that's minimum because if you take a, a 60 foot circle and you put a big old feeder, that feeder's four by four, you know, you take eight square feet and put it in the middle, there's not a lot of room. And remember, deer jump in and they land right here. You see the trail where they're landing. They don't jump in and land right over the fence. So you put a fence at 60 feet, you put a feeder in the middle, he jumps in at five feet, that feed pen closes in quick and the deer's five feet long. 
See what I'm saying? And they put nine of them in here walking around and you know looking at each other. It gets crowded quick with 60 feet. So expand that out. The bigger the better. That's the answer. Big as you can afford. 100 feet, 120, 150 like this one. This is the perfect feed pen. I wouldn't change a thing because it's big, it's productive. Deer have places to go. Now there's some brush around it. You know, some people like a clean, uh, a clean pen, personal preference, but they can see behind it. They can see through it. And in the winter time, this, this brush is gonna be defoliated so that, that deer can still see all the way through it. So there's a little, <coughs> excuse me, there's a little bit of brush in here but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. But now you see feeding pens that are full of brush. Watch what the deer do. It's just like drinking out of that water trough. If you can't see, you're not eating as much as you want. You're not eating comfortably. So you take a bite and you pull your head out. Well, when a deer takes a bite and jerks his head out, he's pulling feed out. He's putting the feed on the ground. It's falling out of the corners of his mouth. So put up a trail camera on your feeder and watch your deer. If they put their face in there and they're eating, they're eating feed, they're not eating air, they're eating feed and there's nothing falling out. But if every trail camera photograph you have is of a deer with a mouthful looking around, he's a nervous wreck. And then look underneath him and there's a pile of feed on the ground. So by you making that animal nervous, he's not comfortable, he's pouring your feed on the ground and he's not eating as much as he wants to. Like the water idea. Put, it, put his face in the feeder, understand being comfortable, give him a good visibility line of sight, and he'll eat sooner, quicker, more efficiently like that water, and then go lay down. His levels of stress will be down here and not up here. So put up a trail camera and that will answer your question. So have it to go off like every 20 seconds, you know, for a week or so. And look at the deer. Are they eating? Are they looking and eating? If they're looking and eating, you need to go out there with a chainsaw and do some work. Maybe you need to make a bigger pen because he's looking at all these deer walking behind him. And a deer walks behind another deer, that's like you walking behind a horse. That's a danger zone. If you're a deer, a buck, and your buddy has hard antlers, you better not let him walk behind you. You better not do it because you'll only do it once. So, so you're eating and out of the corner of your eye you see a deer walk behind you. What are you going to do? You're going to stop, you're going to spill the feed, and you're going to turn around. That's just what you're going to do. So are you feeding deer or are you dancing with deer? You're supposed to be feeding deer. Give them a big pen so they can walk all the way around them. They have good visibility. He's got his head in the feeder and he's eating feed. And they'll only be there for 30 minutes and they go lay down. Lowers his stress. Lowers his, his uh, 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 visibility so he's not as apt to be taken by predators. He's not having to jump in his feed pen four times a day. If he comes into the feed pen once a day and eats, he's safer. But if, because of the nervousness and the, and the size of the pen, if he's having to jump in his feed pen four or five times a day, that's stress. That's hard work, jumping in, jumping out, traveling, walking. It's 104. So we don't want deer eating at our feeders six times a day, not protein feeders. We're here to build the deer, help the deer. We're not here to kill him right here. This has nothing to do with killing deer. This has all to do about growing the deer, maintaining the deer, helping the deer. That's why it's called supplemental feeding. This has nothing to do with killing deer. It has everything to do with growing deer. And then always, you know, put it in the middle for obvious reasons. Some people will put two feed feeders in a feed pen, spread them apart. You know, one, one over there and one over there. Again, to get them as far apart as they can to spread them out. So with, with one feeder, you might could feed eight deer, just say for example. But if you had two, 16 deer, theoretically, 12 deer. Because if there's only eight feeding, that means there's four or five walking around not being fed. They're exposing themselves to predators. They're walking around and they're going to look for something to get into. They're looking for trouble. They're looking to take that sucker punch. So those are the troublemakers walking around in circles while the big deer is eating the feed. But if everybody had access to the feed, they're going to be eating feed and not throwing a sucker punch or anything like that. Does that make sense? So if you can afford it, if you have room for two feeders, space them apart and, and you will relieve most of your social pressures.